Ik heb daar een vraag. Ik zeg, ik zeg het in Tsjechisch. Of Tsjepaj. Firstly, to recognize the executive secretary of Tsjepaj. Oké, okay, ja, dat is een nieuw woord van Tsjepaj. Good afternoon, everyone. Huan Jing Li Ke Chang Gong Li. Welcome. Your Excellency, Premier of the State Council of China. Your Excellency, President of Chile, Mrs. Michelle Bachelet, Professor Cheng Tong. It's a pleasure to greet you, Mr. Wang Yi, Minister of Foreign Affairs of China, Mr. Shi Xiao Shi, Minister of the National Committee on, on Development and Reform, Mr. Gao Chang, Minister of Trade, Ms. Minister Chao Tse, First Under Secretary General of the State Council, Mr. Ming Ji Se, Ministry of the Office of Studies of the State Council, Mr. Li Baurong, Ambassador of China to Chile, Mr. Wan Chao, Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Shi Gong, uh, Head of the Cabinet of Premier Li Keqiang, dear members of the delegation of the People's Republic of China, dear friends of the diplomatic corps, authorities, members of parliament, colleagues of the system of the UN, dear friends, distinguished president, Michelle Bachelet. Thank you for honoring us with your presence in this It was a pioneer in establishing diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China 45 years ago and was the first one to sign a free trade agreement with the People's Republic of China. Madam President, our tribute to you for the commitment of your government promoting constructive, complementary and dynamic relations between Latin America and the Caribbean with Asia Pacific in general, with China particularly. We are pleased to welcome Mr. Foreign Minister Heraldo Munoz, who has been key in this rapprochement. I would like to tell you that your leadership in ECLAC is in most inspiring because you are committed to a society of rights, of equality, and justice, and that is exactly the heart of this ECLAC. Your Excellency, Premier, Li Keqiang, I would like to give you a most cordial and most warm welcome to this House of the UN. ECLAC has been the living expression of the aspirations for development of Latin American and Caribbean peoples. All these aspirations are shared, we know, by the people and government of China. We are deeply honored that you have chosen CEPAL, ECLAC, to share your views about this new phase in the relations between China and Latin America and the Caribbean. Your visit is a landmark in the economic, political, and cooperation relations because it's a change in direction in the relations between China and the region. As you yourself have said it recently in Brazil and even, and I quote what you said, that it was of great relevance. You said it is necessary to deepen with energy, cooperation in productive capacity, whose objective is to make citizens co-beneficiaries of the fruits of development. And we understand this as a very rapid response to the agreement signed in Beijing between the community of Latin American and Caribbean states, CLAC and China. ECLAC has been a privileged witness. We are a small institution, but we feel so honored because since 2007, we have followed this process. And in 2011, Mr. Premier, and in 2012, we had the immense privilege in this exact same room of welcoming the then Vice President and current President of China, Xi Jinping, and then Prime Minister Wen Jiabao. In their messages at that moment, we clearly identified the visionary proposal of China, that is to establish a new and most strategic relation with this region. Thus, we 
we have a company that relates us between the business community from Latin America and the Caribbean and China. We have a company with the meetings of the think tank and we have followed with great interest the enormous capacity that China has proven in becoming in only three and a half decades in, in the largest economy of the world with accelerated processes of industrialization and urban development. Particularly, it's most outstanding that China has carried forward the most successful of experience of poverty reduction, which is unprecedented in humanities in history. You will have been able to reduce poverty between se from 70 to 6 percent between 1984 to 2011. So we've followed with great attention the reforms of your government, the changes, and we are so interested in listening to you today, Mr. Premier. Why? Because truly China is acquiring tremendous, a tremendous key role in world economy with novel initiatives like, for example, the uh, Infrastructure Investment Asian Bank, the Development Bank of the BRICS, and the a project that is has a beautiful name, the Land and Maritime Silk Route. Today, in view of your most distinguished visit, CEPAL is presenting the document that is entitled Latin America and the Caribbean and China towards a new era of economic cooperation. This is in your honor, and hopefully you will take a uh, uh, version of that this afternoon. We have pointed out that in the last 15 years, between 2000 and 2014, commercial relations between China, Latin America, and the Caribbean, the trade of goods has multiplied by 22. Imagine, China is today the second trade partner of the region and the first one of Chile and Brazil. So it's true that this happens in a context where China was growing above 10% between 2000 and 2011. And that, of course, contributed to a super cycle of raw materials with very high prices. But we also see that financial relations led by the Development Bank of China have had a great increase in Latin America and the Caribbean, have uh, reached more than $100 billion between 2005 and 15. It's not only a trade and exchange of goods, but gradually we move on to investments and also to financial and investment relations, particularly in the areas of infrastructure and energy. We've seen with tremendous interest your trip to Brazil, Colombia, and Peru. The announcements made are so relevant and of such great interest for the whole region. We know that China seeks to go at a pace compatible with this process of reforms, and that seeks that this less dynamism will not have a negative impact on job generation. So we are mindful that the world has to expect a growth from China not above 7%. And we know that the engines that China is considering is precisely to become ever more in within an economy of knowledge, of skills, of uh, science, technology, and innovation. So for us, I would say, and not only for us here, but all of us connected in the webcast, this region is uh, hearing your message in all the corners of Latin America and the Caribbean because for the region, the region has slowed down in growth and our region will not grow beyond 1%, therefore, and we do have domestic and external factors re explaining this. On the one hand, there has been a weakening, a decline of consumption, consumption and investment, but truly the external factors have also influenced mainly the drop of demand and prices of raw materials. Our experts used to grow at 2010 in a 26%. Today, in 2014, last year, only we're able to grow 2%. I mean, 
the slowdown is most significant in exports, the decline is great. So we are at a turning point where this relationship can give, move us in a leap forward and get into a direction of strategic mutual benefits. I think we can diversify exports indeed. Uh, promote business, trade, technological partnerships, promote Latin American investments in Asia and also from Asia in the region, and especially from China to this region. We as a region, we need to overcome an international insertion only based on exports of raw materials. We need to have diversification. We need to move forward towards knowledge. And we also face the challenge of inequality, which is characterized by this tremendous heterogeneity in the region and the very little articulation and connectivity among our companies. So as to move to more prosperous and less unequal societies, this region needs to overcome that model. And we are sure that in this new relationship with China, we will be able to achieve this. This CELAC China cooperation plan that was agreed in January has goes of expansion of trade and investment that are very interesting. President Xi Jinping said that our partnership should be based on a formula of one plus three plus six. One, shared prosperity. Three, with three engines, drivers, investment, trade, and financial cooperation. And six, the main axles, energy, natural resources, infrastructure, agriculture, manufacturers, technological innovation, and information technology. And very interesting goals and targets have been set. 250 billion of investment. So your presence here, Mr. Premier, is a tremendous step forward into achieving this goal. The goal was set for 10 years. However, here in Brazil, you've announced investments of $53 billion for the next decade. And you also proposed a model of three by three. And that was so interesting, I thought. A model that uh, tackles connectivity, financing, and partnership or association three by three. So those figures, those numbers really make us think, how can we then achieve these goals of comprehensive prosperity among our societies? So we believe that China can collaborate in this process. The tremendous savings surplus turned China into a potential world-class investor. And in order to contribute not only in the conventional sectors, we know our region is rich in natural resources, and we don't want to stop producing them. I mean, it's, uh, it's really, we don't have policies to relate uh, uh, for uh, appropriate relationships. And this has to be diversified to manufacturers, services, the use of better infrastructure, transportation, energy, and logistics. Well, that project of building a railway with, between Brazil and Peru, connecting the Atlantic with the Pacific Sea coasts, and transferring the technology of China. I mean, uh, partnering with Latin American businessmen, I, we believe it is a magnificent road to promote greater presence of Chinese corporations in the automotive, electronic uh, industries, and especially strengthen our value chains. That is something that we need to learn. You in China have been able to develop an intra-regional trade supporting your neighbors. We should tread in that same direction, increasing our international trade, which is only 19 percent, whilst yours is 40 percent. So we believe that we can contribute with our experience in a central, pivotal uh, subject for China, which is urban development and environmental sustainability. And we can work together in this dynamics, China, Latin America, and the Caribbean in 
uh, issues of the global agenda of after 2015 and the future regime or system of the uh, climate change, as well as the international monetary reform. Uh, I think this post-war uh, order of Bretton Woods is no longer, does not reflect the political and economic realities. We developing countries have more than half of the world GDP, and this calls for a redesign of economic debates. Uh, therefore, the Asian Investment Bank, the BRICS banks, are a true reflection of this new governance that acquires a new South-South component. So, dear, very dear Premier, Your Excellency, we are going to listen with great attention to all your thoughts. We are honored by your presence. We are here ready to achieve commitments with you that you can rest assured that CEPAL, ECLAC, this think tank wants to accompany the building of an even more closer relationship that will be mutually beneficial between China and Latin America. Che Che. for the floor to Mr. Li Xiequian, His Excellency, the Prime Minister of the Council of State of the People's Republic of China. <laughs> President Michelle Bachelet, Executive Secretary Alessia Baxina, your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. Salutas. Uh, just now, the Executive Secretary listed the name of each and every one of the main entourage of my delegation. This shows a great deal of hospitality to the Chinese side. Uh, due to time constraints and the lack of the dignitaries from your side, it is difficult for me to list all the names of the main participants of your side, but still, I wish to express my high respect to all of you. This is my second trip to South America. It seems to me like a trip to meet with friends that I have always been looking forward to seeing. And just now, after hearing the opening remarks from the Executive Secretary, I really, really feel at home here. This morning, I read an op-ed released by the Executive Secretary. And according to her, given the profound adjustments and changes in the world economic situation, Latin America and the Caribbean can no longer rely solely on resources. Instead, it needs to promote diverse development, promote industrialization, and that, I think, very much coincides with China's plans and the proposals for its cooperation with Latin America and the Caribbean countries. This trip has taken me to four countries, Brazil, Colombia, Peru, and now Chile. And I do feel that this is a land 
with a great deal of vitality as well as huge potential and opportunities. The executive secretary just now showed a lot of enthusiasm and aspiration for greater cooperation between China and Latin America and the Caribbean. And I believe that this region has already become a constantly emerging new highlight in today's world. The international status of this region is being, has been enhanced. In particular, this region has been seeking strength through unity and we have seen parallel progress of regional integration organizations and different levels. Countries are advocating dialogue to handle state-to-state -state differences and are taking active part in South-South cooperation. These countries have cooperated with each other on global governance, climate change, energy, food security, and the reform of international financial system. And this cooperation helps to defend the common interests of the, of the developing countries, and this region has become an important force upholding peace and justice in the world stage. This is a region with unique culture and a colorful civilization. Here we have the Amazon rainforests, the soaring Andes mountains, the vast plain of Pampas, unique landscape, a great deal of biodiversity, and a long history of human civilization. This has helped create a vigorous and inclusive Latin America civilization. I have visited a number of very representative archaeological and historical museums, which gave me an opportunity to understand the splendid history of the ancient culture and civilization of this land. And I have also talked with artists and authors, both from China and Latin America. And this shows that the civilization of Latin America is indeed a treasure of the world civilization. In addition, the economy of this region also has great potential. Although the executive secretary mentioned just now that this region is facing some downward pressure, this, I think, to a large extent, shows the difficult and bumpy process towards economic recovery of the whole world. Having said that, Latin America was one of the pioneers of industrialization and urbanization among the developing world. And through my exchanges with leaders and the representatives of different countries and the sectors, I have found that countries in this region are also restructuring themselves and changing their development strategies. They are also promoting industrialization and reindustrialization. So despite all this downward pressure, I'm confident that given the huge potential of this region, Latin American countries will surely fend off all these downward risks. An important mandate for my trip to Latin America and at this time is to discuss with regional leaders on how to better promote practical cooperation between China and these countries, in particular on industrial cooperation, and we do want to seek new breakthroughs. The international financial crisis have led to financial bubbles, which made it even more difficult for the world economy to recover. To achieve recovery of the global economy, we do need to rely on the real e economy. For developing countries, they need to accelerate industrialization and urbanization. And for developed countries, 
they also need to promote reindustrialization. And given this backdrop, we need to expand infrastructure development, promote development of manufacturing um, equipment manufacturing basic raw materials and the related service sectors and these will provide good opportunity for us to defend the downward risks of the economy and given a backdrop of globalization and given the fact that countries are located at different stages of the industrial chain and given the great deal of complementarity among all countries to develop industrial cooperation will help us to further improve the industrial chain of the whole world and will help our respective real economies to properly address the risks of the downward pressure on the economy. And in our respective national development, we need to introduce the competitive equipment and the production lines, as well as the advanced technologies and management expertise of other countries, as this will help us to leverage our respective strengths, lower the costs of infrastructure development, promote diverse development of industries, create more jobs, and help us to achieve a win-win outcome. This will also help the world economy to achieve strong, sustainable and balanced growth. For the past 30 years and more, China has scored great achievements in its economic and social development and we started from reform and opening up and it is thanks to opening up that China was able to engage in reform. In the early stages, we introduced the industrial production lines from other countries and at the same time we have been upgrading it, improving it and that is why today in this world China has the largest production capacity in terms of steel and building materials in the world. And given the current stage of urbanization and industrialization, we believe that industrial cooperation between China and Latin America faces good opportunity. And this also brings multiple benefits. China has cost-effective capability of equipment manufacturing, integrated technology. And for Latin America and the Caribbean, it has a huge demand of infrastructure development and upgrading of industries. And in our cooperation, we can also learn from the advanced technologies of advanced and developed countries in America and Europe, so that Latin America and the Caribbean countries will also be able to upgrade their infrastructure and industries. My first trip took me to Brazil and I went to Rio de Janeiro and I also had an opportunity of taking a subway train produced by Chinese companies and these trains will be used in 2016 during the Rio, Olympic, Rio de Janeiro Olympic Games and I also took a China-made ferry boat and I think it was because of the cost effectiveness of the Chinese equipment that these companies have won the bid. And I also wish to tell you that for those subway trains I took in Brazil, 20% of its key parts were actually purchased by Chinese companies from their Western to the specific European counterparts. For the ferry boat I took this time, the engine of this boat was purchased by Chinese companies from American company. This in itself shows that the whole process reflects 
the industrial chain cooperation throughout the world. And our equipment also meet local environmental standards. For example, the ferry boats were made of alloy and it was powered by electricity instead of by diesel. So it is environmental friendly and energy efficient. The cooperation between China and Latin America will bring benefits to both sides. In addition, we can also cooperate with developed countries so that such cooperation will start from a high level. China is also ready to invest in the development of steel, electricity, and basic materials. All of which are needed by the development of infrastructure sector. It will help to generate local jobs and to ensure that these materials could be found locally. And for those key parts and the technologies, we can purchase from America and Europe so as to make sure that this equipment will meet local environmental standards and be energy efficient. Such industrial cooperation helps to boost the real economy and by doing so we also need to ensure that the finance offers proper support. We need to establish industrial cooperation funds so as to ensure that more resources will be allocated to the real economy. Industrial cooperation is also a new channel for the developing countries and developed countries to deepen north-south cooperation. It not only means the combination between the industrial sector and infrastructure, the combination between industrialization and reindustrialization, but also the proper combination between the financial sector and the real economy. It will help to promote the world economic recovery. China is one of the main economies in the world. It is also the largest developing country. Due to the downward pressure in the world and also due to accumulated problems domestically, there has been some slowdown in the development of the Chinese economy. And having said that, we still registered a 7.4% growth last year. And for the first quarter of this year, the Chinese GDP grew by 7%. The target for the whole year is around 7%. And I had just received some preliminary indexes for economic performances in China, which shows that for the months of April and May, the Chinese economy continued to enjoy a steady momentum of growth. The industries and company performances are improving, and the market expectations are also going up. We have the full capability to ensure that the economic operation will stay at a proper range and to achieve the target of around 7% that we have set for the whole year. The absolute number of around 7% for this year is more than the 7.4% that we have secured last year because the total of the Chinese economy of last year already reached 10 trillion US dollars. So that is already a large basis and to maintain, to continue to maintain a 7% annual growth rate that will help China to continue to contribute to the growth of the economy worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, coming back to Latin America and the Caribbean, 
after my last visit 12 years ago, I can see that our relationship has achieved a quantum leap. China has become the region's second largest trading partner and also the largest trading partner of many countries in this region. The region's export growth rate to China is among the fastest in the world. It is also an important destination for China's outbound investment. The fruits, red wine and beef from this region and the seafood from Chile have made their way to tens of thousands of Chinese dinner tables. And this market will continue to expand because China's consumption is being upgraded. What we are driving at is not just inclusiveness of the international developments, but also fairness in domestic development. In many Latin American and Caribbean cities, Chinese tourists are often greeted by Ni Hao in Chinese. For example, the moment when I got off the bus, I was greeted by Ni Hao in Chinese. I also want to say hola to him. I believe more and more Chinese tourists will come to this region and will be able to speak the local language and uh, greet each other in each other's language. China is ready to deepen cooperation with countries in this region and enhance mutual learning and jointly embark on a new journey of our partnership. We want to build four pillars together with the countries in this region. First, we need to cement traditional friendship and political mutual trust. We value our all-round cooperation relationship with this region. We have issued a joint statement with each of the four governments and uh, further clarified the future priority of our development. There are no historical grievances or fundamental conflicts of interest between our two sides, and we both believe that countries' relations need to be handled with mutual respect, equality, and uh, under the principle of win-win cooperation. We don't want to impose our own will on others. We stand ready to work with countries in this region to increase closer high-level exchanges, carry out macroeconomic policy coordination, and properly settle the specific issues in our bilateral relationship with a long-term perspective. We should also step up international coordination, and uh, we need to speak with one voice on international financing system reform, the negotiation on new carbon emissions, the post-2015 development agenda, and cybersecurity, and we also need to coordinate more on building a balanced and uh, more inclusive global development partnership network so as to jointly uphold the common interests and the voice of developing countries. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the founding of the UN and the victory of the World Anti-Fascist War. As the poet Alfonso Reyes said, only those with history will have a great future, and we are ready to work with countries in this region to pursue a greater future. Second, we need to upgrade our business cooperation. During this visit, I have signed framework agreement with the four countries on production capacity cooperation, which include cooperation on major projects, including the Atlantic and Pacific Railway. And during my discussion with President uh, Blatchlett, I also discussed we are willing to participate in the development of the Atlantic Pacific Tunnel in infrastructure and uh, scientific and technological innovation and also in mining. In all these fields, we have signed over 40 documents.
we suggest that we adopt a three times three model. As Executive Secretary said, the three times three model means that we need to jointly build three arteries in logistics, energy, and information, realize sound interactions between the uh, businesses, the society, and the government, expand the three financing channels in fund, credit, and insurance. China will encourage its companies to invest and do business in the region, increase our cooperation on deep processing of energy, mineral resources, and agro products, and foster industrial chain cooperation in machinery, metallurgy, and constructive materials, and expand our all-round cooperation and uh, meet that American country's needs with Chinese equipments. We can also carry out cooperation in new energy and uh, internet, as well as other new areas. Discuss the possibility of establishing economic special zones and industrial parks, and uh, discuss uh, establishing trade and facilitation measures, including FTA. In Brazil, I also announced that we need to set up a special fund for industrial cooperation, and we will provide 30 billion US dollars financing support to um, back our industrial and investment cooperation projects. If needed, such financing support can be expanded because you know China has abundant exchange, foreign exchange reserve, which is almost 4 trillion US dollars. Of course, it can be used in the capital market. But it, they can also be invested in industrial cooperation so that we can combine our investment with industrial cooperation. I also want to emphasize here that such cooperation is based on mutual respect for each other's civilization. The civilization of Latin America and the Caribbean is not just a crystallization of human activities. It is also a result of the great biodiversity, including the rainforests, the great mountains here. The power of nature here has given great charm to civilization in this continent. So in our investment endeavor and in building the uh, transcontinental railway, we will pay attention to the environment and uh, ability to resist natural disasters. Third, we need to promote people-to-people -people exchanges through multiple measures. This visit has been very fruitful in promoting mutual learning between our civilizations. We are willing to work with the region to ensure the success of the 2016 year of cultural exchanges. We can also discuss establishing cultural and the civilizational dialogue mechanism and include it into the China CELAC Forum. We can also discuss a project of translating classic works of the two sides and increase our people's understanding of each other's culture. And uh, I believe we can also increase experience sharing and uh, cooperation on urbanization, poverty reduction, and scientific research. But of course, China will also be in need of the special resources from this continent in the long run. We are also willing to increase exchanges between our young people. We will introduce a young scholar dialogue program 
at the appropriate time and increase the scholarships for Spanish and Portuguese language teachers and students from Chinese universities to study in this region so as to build a bridge across the Pacific Ocean between our peoples. ECLAC is the most important think tank in this region. It is also an active advocate and agent for economic cooperation and regional integration in this part of the world. It has put forward new economic theories for developing countries, including Latin America and the Caribbean region. The Chinese version of the CPL review has a lot of readers uh, are very welcome in are, are very popular in China. Actually, before I came here, the executive secretary has given me some Chinese books written by Eklak. They were actually translated into Chinese by Eklak. The Chinese translation is very fluent and uh, very idiomatic. I'd like to thank all the members of ECLAC for your efforts to promote friendship and cooperation between our two sides. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing here at the stage of ECLAC. It is located in Chile. Chile is known as the end of the earth. But actually, there is only a notion between us. My visit to Chile coincides with the 45th anniversary of our diplomatic ties. And our relationship with Chile has been a pioneer in our relationship with the region as a whole. During the visit, I will also attend a series of events with President Bachelet. In the morning, we have both decided that China will build the first IMB clearing bank in Latin America and the Caribbean. China will also provide Chile with a quota of 50 billion IMB RQV2 to support our industrial cooperation projects. We hope that Chile can play a bigger role in promoting China's relationship with this region. This also reminds me of the famous Chilean poet Pablo Neruda. He said he has a third eye with one eye always set on the sea, that is the Pacific Ocean. I believe what he was watching is China across the Pacific Ocean. He had been to China for several times. And uh, on the Chinese part, our poet Xin Ji also once said that no Green Mountain can stop the river from surging forward. All the rivers in China, big or small, will be admitted into Pacific. They flow eastward and uh, they flow in the direction of Latin America and the Caribbean. Therefore, Cooperation between our two sides is not just supported by our traditional friendship, but also facilitated by favorable conditions. We need to work together so that our cooperation will be unstoppable. And such cooperation will bring greater benefits to our two peoples and provide a solid foundation for a better life of our two peoples.
Gracias. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Premier uh, Li Qichen, uh, President, uh, thank you very much indeed. And since uh, you have already quoted Pablo Neruda, please allow me to tell you what Pablo Neruda said in 1954 in a poem that he wrote and which is called uh, For You the ear wheat. He said, from sea to sea, from land to snow, all men look upon you, China. What a powerful sister has been born. Uh, the man and the women, I would add, in the Americas look upon you, China. We greet you, and with via me, we send you a warm embrace. Thank you very much, uh, Premier. Thank you, uh, President. Uh, this has been, indeed, a great honor for ECLAC. We thank uh, all of you for your presence here. And um, after the authorities leave, uh, we invite you to a coffee break outside this room. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that's all from me.